Acts 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 34 through 5 says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Amen. Amen. And you know, a lot of times in That's life, um, we always look to be uh, accepted, as verse 35 says. We look for vo uh, validity, you know, amongst our peers, amongst our co-workers, sometimes even the body of Christ. You know, if, if jealousy sets in, if you're in this competition, obviously that's wrong. That is a sinful nature. But sometimes the old man does creep up, as Pastor was talking about. Sometimes we can't operate in our flesh. And, you know, the flesh is always looking for some kind of adoration, some kind of attaboy, yeah. some kind of, you know... Some kind of yeah. self-esteem booster. That's true. And and you know, let's be honest. Who doesn't like a compliment? It feels good. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, come on. I mean, it feels good. You like to be encouraged. You like to get a compliment. But you know, being in the Lord, being a believer, and somebody walking, you know, um, in the operation of the Holy Spirit, somebody walking after and close to the Lord's heart. I don't believe anybody seeks adoration or any sort of compliment because we know that anything that we can do is of the Lord. Amen. You know, any skill or talent I may have surely didn't come from me or my own strength or my own understanding. It's the Lord. So as soon as we get a compliment, encouragement, you know, praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And praise I think that's the heart Amen. of every believer. Amen. You know, sometimes the old man does try to creep in there and kind of feed your ego, but we just give uh, God the praise because he Amen. brings our worth. It is not anything that I can do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There is a, there's no, there's no credibility or validity in me, in Drew, the human being, but through the operation of the Holy Spirit, through my renewed mind, my regenerated mind, through listening, being obedient to the Holy Spirit, what He has for me to do, that is how I can become credible. That is how I can be of, of a good rapport. People can trust me because they trust Him. Amen. If you see me, I want you to see Him. Amen. So today I just want to talk about... Um, about validity. A lot of people struggle with who they are in Jesus, but, but there's no need to. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Uh, right Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, in, you know, in the world's eyes, through your average uh, unbeliever, I think a lot of people will base your, your credibility off of um, your good works that you do. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're the good works you do for your community. Maybe even your education. You know, um, people look at you, do you have a doctrine and such and such? Did you go to this seminary school? The Lord doesn't call you to do anything. Simply, we have to trust in the Lord, follow the Holy Spirit. He will be there to walk, to guide us, and to have an outpouring in our life that we would never even see imaginable. He can use us in ways we never would thought of. That's right. But a lot of people will judge us off of our uh, head knowledge. What do we know? Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies, the scripture says. So as long as we show the love of God for one another, that is where we will excel. That is how you reach people. Amen. Not who I am. You know, it's about who God called me to be, not not what I can be. You know, I believe it's the is it the army that says be all that you can be. Yeah. <laughs> but but really, it's be all that God called you to be. Because I can think in my mind, well, this is who I am. This is who I want to be. But if the Lord didn't call me that, then I'm I'm missing the mark. Yeah. No, that's true. You know, I'm called to be who He wants me to be. Amen. I'm called to do the things that he wants me to do. And God forbid if I do not walk out and do those things. You know, I'm, I'm in serious uh, serious turmoil there with the Lord. That is not pleasing in his eyes. Obviously, that would be being disobedient. Um, now, as I said, maybe uh, people might judge your education or credentials or whatever in order to be validity. But, but good works, education, these sort of things, I do not want to be known by. Simply the Lord and the Lord alone is what validates me. It's what makes me who I am. Amen. I am nothing less than a child of God, than a son of God. I do not identify with um, being a sinner or somebody, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, Scripture says that I am a saint. Amen. Scripture says I'm a child. I'm a son of God. I'm an heir to the king. Amen. I'm an heir to the most Praise high. The Lord. Does anybody believe that today? Amen. 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 I sure do. <laughs> Amen. I remember, uh, for instance, for instance, I don't know who said it, um, at the Christmas party, um, somebody was joking around. Somebody didn't like the brownies. And somebody's like, oh, you sinner. Wait, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but then somebody spoke up and was like, aren't we all sinners? No. 
Absolutely not. So <laughs> I want to encourage you today. <laughs> I am not a sinner. You are not a sinner. If, if you have been saved by grace, if you've been adopted into his family by the blood of Jesus, you are a son, a child, a Amen. daughter of God. Amen. And I think a lot of times we can get wrapped up in our own insecurity, get wrapped up in our own, you know, uh, train of thought to where we believe these lies that we are just, you know, some some peasant, if you will. But, but in fact, we are king's kids. We're the children of God. Praise God. The Lord is what gives us our worth. He is what gives us our, our credibility. Yes. yes. So, and I want to encourage you in that uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21 says, For he hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, yep. that we might be made the righteousness of God mm -hmm. in him. You know, in that scripture right there, that personifies who Jesus is and who I am in him. The Father made His Son, Jesus, sin, who knew no sin. Amen. Jesus was perfect. He was spotless. He was blameless. But Jesus made Him sin in the flesh in order to get beaten and killed for something wrong I did. Right? Yep. Is anybody with me today? Mm -hmm. But, you know, that the Scripture says that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So Jesus became sin in order for me to become holy and perfect as the Lord is. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That should tell you right there, we are not sinners. We are not, you know, peasants. We are not just these um, minuscule people. We mean the world to the yes, Lord. Yes, we mean the world to him. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and, and, you know, there's scripture after scripture about who we are in Jesus. John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Hallelujah. You know, and Jesus is not a sinner. He knew no sin. So if the scripture states that I am joined into the Lord in one spirit, the Holy Spirit, how am I possibly a sinner anymore? If Jesus wasn't a sinner, and me and him are not one spirit, how am I a sinner? Yeah. I'm not. So I want to encourage you today. Don't look at yourself as anything less than a child of God, a product of the grace of God. Yes, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord, for the birth he gives us for amen. our praise help. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ryder is going home. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Father, Lord. for deliverance. Um, if you want to turn with me at the uh, Second Corinthians chapter six, one through ten. Um, I think a lot of the versions I have is King James. I think there's some amplified. So if you if it deviates, that's why. I apologize. Second um, Corinthians chapter six, one through ten. <clears throat> amen. It says, uh, We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, I believe that is, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fasting, by the purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil rapport and good rapport, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Amen. That's a mouthful right there. Amen. Everybody get that. You know, a scripture comes to mind is that is that it's it's better for me to have a millstone tied around my neck and be cast out to sea than I offend somebody. Amen. Than I offend the little one, the scripture says. God forbid if I am to be offensive in it in any which way. The beginning of verse three says that um, we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But guess what? Me as a human being, me, myself, Drew, I can be offensive in everything. But it is through the Lord and the Lord alone that I may not be offensive, that I may be blameless. You know, Jesus is what gives us our worth. Jesus is, is the reason that we can touch people for him. Not anything that I can do. Right. Not anything Amen. that I can, you know, offer up. Yeah. I can really offer nothing, to be honest with you. You know, there's no credibility in me, but there's all the credibility in the world Amen. in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, Acts 3, chapter 1 through 10, if you guys want to turn there. It 
It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, and being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Verse 4, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. That is just so powerful to me. You know, they said, silver and gold I do not have. Possessions I cannot give you. Even if I did give them to you, what would they benefit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, any material I can give you means nothing. But what I can give you is through the power, through the grace of Jesus Christ, the healing touch of the Lord. Yeah. That to me is just so encouraging. Man. You know, anything of value, anything of substance is of Jesus, because obviously this world offers me nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know who's going to get this reference. It's more probably the kids my age. Does anybody remember the game uh, Banjo-Kazooie? Yes. yes. <laughs> when that game was first coming out, and I, and I was like, I don't know, 10, 8, whatever, I thought that game was going to be life-changing. <laughs> like, that game was the pinnacle, and like, this is going to be my everything. That's awesome. And you know what? I got it, I enjoyed it, and I beat it, and that's what it was. And then, you know, life moved on. But, but like, it, it's just a shame how we can get so wrapped up in, in things on this earth to where we lose sight of the real prize. I literally thought this game was going to be it. And, like, my life is going to be better, and it's going to be good. <laughs> and not that I had a bad life, I'm not saying that. But, like, you know, just me as a child. But now I look back at that, we've got to put away childish things, as Paul Amen. says. Yeah. You know, anything... Anything good, lasting, eternal is of Jesus. That's right. Amen. No possession we can get is going to make us yeah. just Amen. everything. Like I thought that game would be. I don't know why I felt like to say that, but I did. And that game was awesome, by the way. Yes, it was. It was very clean, too. And it's a good fun. <laughs> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Amen. Old things have passed away, and he has made all things new. Amen. Amen. You know, my flesh and my old way of living, my old way of thinking is gone. My old mentalities of, if I get this possession, I'm going to be set. That is gone. Amen. I know that's not true. That's right. You know, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but it is he who lives in me. Amen. And I want people to see him. I don't want people to see a possession I have. That's right. Something I have that I enjoy so much, I think it's mind-blowing. And it's really not. It's just it's just a material of this yes. world. Yes. That's a good word. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 23 through 29. Um, if you want to turn there, you don't have to. Anybody want to turn there? No? Yes? No? Yes. Yes? All right. <laughs> Where? Uh, Colossians 1, 23 through 29. Uh, verse 23 goes on to say, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. And, you know, I don't know about you, but after reading this, that's really exciting. 
Because Paul, Paul was nobody special. Like, he wasn't supernatural. He was a human being, just like you or I. You know, and greater things we can do than Paul. Scripture even says greater things we can do than Jesus did. Yeah. A apart from writing, like, you know, 13 books of the Bible. Obviously, we can't do that like Paul did. But, you know, greater things we can do. And that's really exciting to me. You know, I am, I am a human being, yes, but through the divine nature, through the regeneration of myself and the Lord, through the operation of the Holy Spirit, I can do things, you know, greater than the eye can even see. Yeah. You know, because the Lord is, is just so powerful and so good. You know, we need to continue to be grounded and to be settled in the faith. Verse 23 says, not moved away from the gospel because we are too made ministers of it. Just like Paul. Whereunto we need to labor, striving to fulfill the work of God, which works mightily in us. There is no validity, there's no merit or credibility in me. But Jesus, who works and operates through me, just as he did Paul, our identity, our life, our being, needs to be found in Jesus. And if it ain't, we need to check that. Yeah, amen. amen. Just because we are simple you know, human beings... You know, I don't mean simple in a derogatory way, but just because we are human flesh does not mean we can't be anything like Jesus was. A lot of people like, oh, well, how come you don't look just like Jesus? So, well, guess what? I'm trying my best. No. <laughs> and that's all that I can do as long as I'm obedient to the Holy Spirit. That's right. As long as he operates in my life, I follow him, and I do what I can, do what I feel led to do, and try to be what he's called me to be. That is what we need to be. That's about. right. Amen. Because in me, in Drew, there is nothing good. That's right. Amen. But every good gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. Yes, Amen. hallelujah. Thank you, God Jesus. is faithful, and I just want to encourage you today, don't get confused about who you are. We are everything Amen. to Christ. Amen. We are everything. That's a good word. We're a saint, child of God, son of God, daughter of God. I do not identify with being a sinner. Amen. I do not identify That's with right. that. Amen. We are much more in the Lord Jesus gave us everything so we might be everything. Amen. Amen. It's good. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you, Lord, for this time together today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you, Lord, for just just a, a, a being in you, Lord, having our being in you, Father. I pray that nobody struggles with anything, Lord, yes. that might take away from who you called us to be. We, Lord, we are, we are children of God, Father. We just um, give you all the praise and the glory. Yes, thank you, Lord, for just walking Jesus. and moving, Lord, in us. Thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to operate in the Holy Spirit, that we may be obedient, yes, Lord. Lord. It takes obedience to be a child of God, because those who are led by the Amen. Spirit are the child of God. That's right. Yeah. And if I'm not obedient, I cannot be led, Lord. So I just pray that everybody just submits their hearts, submits their, their minds, their selves, Lord, to you and what you called us to be, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for just working through us mightily, just as you did with Paul, just as we read about in Colossians, Lord. We just pray, and we just know, and we trust that our identity is in you and no one else. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.